tell me a little bit about how how Bone Thugs started. Well, Bone Thugs, <coughs> Bone Thugs started way back in the days with a couple of the other members, um, Crazy and Lazy. They're sort of like the originators of the group, and they and they started a crew called Band-Aid Boys. And the Band-Aid Boys were a crew, they used to basically just wear Band-Aids, you know how Nelly does now. Yeah. And um, I came into town, and they changed, they changed the name to, to Bone Thugs and Harmony. And it was kind of complete. You know, Wishbone was always in the family, but he was never actually um, in the group until after a while. And what about Flash? Well, he was always big, bro. He, um, he was a basketball player in the squad. So what he would do would, um, he would kind of, you know, watch after us. We as little cats running around drinking beer all the goddamn time, cutting class. He was always in there, uh, A and B student, cool as a, cool as a fan. Kind of crazy because he turned out to be the one to go to jail ten damn years. How did Easy E come to the picture? Well, you know, one-way bus tickets, man. We took everybody took one-way bus tickets, all of us down to um, Los Angeles, and from there, we uh, stayed out there past that earthquake that happened, I believe, in '93 or '94, and uh, we hooked up with Young Easy E. So after we hooked up with E, we all took one-way bus tickets back to Cleveland, and uh, finally met up with him. We took the bus back after we met him at a um, nightclub, and um, the rest is history. You know, Easy liked what he heard. He see the young NWA part two, and boom, 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 we were good to go. <laughs> Have you guys brought that own unique style? Would you oh, say? Oh yeah, that was it. Was so shocking because nobody really heard that style. Some people were rapping fast. Luther Vandross, you know, say you're gonna be, say you wanna be, and so on and all that. But nobody really put that with the harmony and made it a patented flow. No good words, street, um, harmony, and camaraderie. And that was the difference in what we were doing compared to what everyone else wound up doing. simple to to put a ball record out in 1995 after easy die because the buzz was just there mm -hmm. didn't have to do too much marketing or too much promoting you know what I mean it was already there you know what I mean and when you're not working towards a group becoming a mega group we were the hip-hop Aerosmith we were the hip-hop Metallica hell the hip-hop Beatles let's go even further but when people don't see that vision and all they can see is the lining of their pockets and them being famous, you know what I mean? Then there's one. Where are you at personally as compared to the group? Oh, well, you know, it's, I've been solo since 98, and a lot of people and didn't know that. You know what I mean? A lot of people were still under the impression that I was with the group. But I sued everybody in 1998. It's all on the internet and everything. Sony, Ruthless, Relativity for my solo rights. I never signed with the group as a group, so there was no reason for me to come at them in any way. You know what I mean? So, But I've been by myself since 98. It was just a lot of bullshit that was going on that I didn't too much agree with. Easy passed away then, you know, it, it's kind of difficult to deal with when you don't have a, 
Little Wayne and baby situation. When you don't have an older mentor that actually gives a shit about you, that actually cares about you. You know what I mean? So it's one of those kind of things, you know? Was it something between you and crazy? No, I think normal friendly competition is always going to arise. Um, those little brain waves that may come in are always going to arise. It's up for that individual to be able to discern it. But the basic problem was business. If a, a group sells 40 million records and everybody is making what they're supposed to be making and their children's children's children, college tuitions are paid for, then there is no problem when, it, when it's amongst friends. Mm -hmm. But when 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 you have that 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 compiled onto it, and then somebody throws a a, a curveball at you, you're you're liable not to be able to smack it out the park, because you're not making Hank Aaron money. You know, you're not you're not getting that Mark McGuire chip. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it, it, that that kind of reflects. One thing reflects on the next one, but Crazy's all right. He's all right, fella. You know what I mean? Everybody's pretty much all right with one another, but you know what I mean? All the different factors do come into play. So where are you at as an artist right now? Well, you know, constantly working. You know, I'm going to go, I'm going towards the mixtape arena because the, 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 the mind state of uh, music in general is three months at the most. Well, it's three months and you got to keep putting music out. But the retailers and, and, and the labels are more old school. They're like one record a year and if it doesn't pop, you know what I mean, so on and so forth. I'm uh, putting out mixtapes, a uh, book, I got a book and a record coming out. Um, uh, definitely doing the Make-A-Wish Foundation stuff, you know, stay heavily into that. We got something with the Busy Bone Kidnap Kids, because I'm like the only person to, like, be kidnapped publicly. Can and you explain found, a little bit about that? Well, like, uh, everybody kind of knows the story. I was like five years old, I was kidnapped. And um, John Walsh, the, uh, the, the person who started America's Most Wanted, yep. had a son who passed away, who was kidnapped. Mm -hmm. And he did a movie, and he put a lot of kidnapped kids on pictures. And they found me in a trailer park from that movie. It was called Adam. So I'm one of the only, you know, really one of the only rappers that have that kind of a story. You know, along with the foster homes and butt kickings and da 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 And, uh, you know, so I'm heavily into helping kidnap kids on YouTube. And we're going to turn it into a reality show after we get, a, you know, garner enough attention, et cetera, et cetera. Instead of coming out there and, you know, trying to be a, a pimp or, you know, no, no shot in the dark to the Stallionaires or Flavor Flav. Because I watch that shit and I love it or Ray J or any of them. I just kind of want to bring something different to the reality show arena, something a little more heartfelt, a little more meaningful and true. You know what I mean? Just to give them something else to go along with it. This is kind of like conscious rap. You got gangster rap, you got your commons, you got your Talib Qualies, your most deaths, and you got your ice cubes, you know what I mean? And your easies sure. and, and, and all that other stuff. So, you know, that's kind of what I'm trying to bring to, to the table. You know, it's, it's going pretty good. Ryan Seacrest loves the idea. And, you know, we're getting nibbles here and there. Cool, cool. So you, you met Ryan? And well, yeah, yeah, we tweet <laughs> each other every now and again.